When you're using a dual band filter, like an Optolong Extreme, or if you've done narrow band with H alpha and oxygen three, and you want to do an HOO composition, sometimes it's actually very hard to get the blue of the oxygen three to come out in your final images. Today, we're gonna to see how to remedy that with PixInsight. Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Uh, these days, all of my telescopes are kind of like out of commission. <laughs> so, so I'm only left with doing processing and so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, and yes, so we're going to do an HOO image. Uh, it's gonna be an image of the Sol Nebula that I captured back in January 2019, I believe, uh, from here in Tokyo using a, a Koa Promina Prominar um, 350 millimeters f4 lens wide open. Uh, it was an excellent lens and I should never have sold it. And I took um, some exposures in oxygen 3, some exposures in H alpha. The uh, final image is noisy as heck, but we're gonna see what we can do about it. On the screen now, you'll see uh, what was the result after I first processed it in HOO palette, but you can see there's not a lot of blue. So let's find out how we can correct that. Now, full credit, where credit is due. Unfortunately, I don't remember where the credit is due, but on Cloudy Nights recently, I saw someone made a post about how they managed to get the blue out of their images. And I followed their process, added a few twists of my own, and that's what I'm going to present today. Uh, but unfortunately, I cannot find the original post, so I cannot credit the person who inspired me to, to, to use this method. So um, sorry, uh, if you watch this video, please let us know down in the comments and you recognize yourself. Again, I have no idea. Probably a lot of people use this method, so no idea. Uh, anyway, let's get started. On the screen, we have H alpha on the left, oxygen three on the right. H alpha is meh, decent. Oxygen three is noisy as heck. Uh, also, um, I've done some uh, background extraction, uh, dynamic background extraction and automated background extraction because it's actually really hard to get rid of uh, some of the gradient in the oxygen three. It's gonna come uh, bite us uh, in the butt later on in this processing, but, uh, but we'll see that. Anyway, um, they're still in the linear stage and uh, you could use, here it's H alpha and oxygen three directly from a monochrome camera. Uh, but if you had an L extreme, it works exactly the same way. Uh, you separate your RGB channels and then you combine green and blue um, in pixel math to create an oxygen three and you use red as H alpha. And I've done that in multiple previous videos. Uh, you end up with H alpha or red and then oxygen three, a combination of the green and blue channels. Okay, so what do we do next? Normally I would do some easy denoise. Uh, but here, the result is so noisy, and I think I have like probably what I would call pedestal issues, and that I have some purely black pixels, which should not happen, that uh, the easy denoise will not work well on this image. So we're not gonna use that. I'm directly going to use the easy processing suite and do a soft stretch on both the uh, oxygen three and the H alpha, starting with H alpha. And now I've done oxygen three. Okay, next step is I'm actually going to do the combination. So I am going to use pixel math for that. And uh, pixel math, we're gonna use um, not a single RGBK expression because we want to create multiple channels. So I am going to say that R will be H for H alpha. And green is actually going to be a mixture of oxygen three and H alpha. Uh, so we're gonna say 0 0.7 times O 0.3 times H. Uh, you can adjust those percentages or those uh, ratios there as you like. And blue, I put oxygen three directly. The original poster had uh, oxygen three times 0 0.95, sorry, plus uh, 0 0.05 times H alpha. Um, that might be psychological, <laughs> but you know, let's try it that way. And uh, we want to make sure that we create a new image at the bottom and that the color space is RGB. And then I am going to click on the square icon to create this new color image. And we see the color image in some instances. So I reprocessed my rosette nebula from a couple of years ago as well. And immediately I had a lot of blue, which is great. Uh, but sometimes 
I don't see a lot of blue here. So we have to find another way to insert that blue here. So I'm going to close pixel math for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use starnet plus plus, which didn't exist when I first processed those images to uh, remove the stars uh, from all of them. Also on the color image, I'm going to make sure that I create a star mask so that we can bring the stars back to the image in the end. So I am going to go in the processes, starnet. As usual, you need to have your RGB weights files and grayscale weights file configured here. Uh, you can do so with the uh, wrench icon and you look inside the PixInsight library folder and those, uh, those weight files are there. And I'm going to check create star mask for the color one and drag and drop the icon on the uh, color image. We're going to wait for that to be done. Okay, we're done with the color image, star mask and star removal. We'll bring them back later on, don't worry. I'm just gonna put that in icon and leave it be. Now I'm gonna uncheck the create star mask for the other two images and I'll do exactly the same thing on oxygen three and on H alpha. Okay, and we're done. So everything is starless. We just have the stars stored away safely on the side here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some range masks. So I am going to use the range selector for that. And um, here it is, range selection. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna uh, put a preview on the oxygen three here, and I'm gonna try to find a good balance where I keep the oxygen three parts of the structure. Um, and you can see that I have definitely some kind of vignetting or vignetting uh, problem here. Um, I probably didn't do proper flats at the time, unfortunately. Um, so here we can see I'm, I'm taking a bit too much of the background. So I'm going to try something like this. And we need, and also what I did is I make sure that the smoothness factor here is strong enough that all of this noise kind of like disappears into some very smoothed out thing. You can drag and drop here and this will create a new file, which is um, range mask. Now the problem that I see here is that the preview and the actual image uh, don't look the same. So that's why the preview is not so good. And I have too much background here. So I'm trying to, to, uh, to put the lower limit a bit higher here. And let's see what we get. This is not so bad. Maybe we can use that. Let's try at 24. And basically this will decide how much of the, of the O3 will become a blue kind of uh, color on the final image. And I think we have a good compromise. We still have a bit of background um, in there, but it's not so bad. So now that I have this, I can uh, drag and drop this range mask onto the color image to add it as a mask. I'm going to uh, disable show mask so we can see the original image. And we are going to do my favorite game, which is playing with curves. So process explorer curves transformation. And I am actually going to play with B first and I am going to open a preview pane. And here, playing with B, you can see that immediately we, we can get some blue back in the nebula. And I can then play with C to try and, and change a bit like how this blue looks like. I can also go to green here and reduce or increase the amount of green in here to change again the hue of the blue that we want. We can do the same for red and maybe something like this is not too bad, right? So we do have a bit of blue here now in the nebula, which we didn't have at all before. I can also play with saturation to make that blue pop a little bit more. And that's the gist of it. That's the trick. It is adding the blue like that using an oxygen three mask. And as you can tell the corners of my image, because of this poor flat calibration that I had, is they're not great. And so we're gonna to have to deal with them. Now, if I were um, to play with my mask, I could use the game script, uh, which is a free script available if you just search for it online to kind of like isolate just the soul nebula. But I feel that's kind of like cheating. Uh, so I am going to have to just like um, work on removing those blue areas, top right, bottom right, especially in the final image. Um, and I can still, you know, play with C again, uh, the C curve, see what that gives us. And I think that's pretty nice. I liked the, I like this result. 
and we can apply it to the image and magic, the blue is there. It's beautiful. Now, before I try to get rid of those uh, blue areas next to the uh, nebula, I am going to do the same thing with uh, the H-alpha. So I am going to remove the mask and we're going to do a range selection on the H-alpha image and we're going to do essentially the same thing. So again, we cannot trust the preview, um, although this time we actually were able to trust it. So the preview gave us a good result and now I'm going to apply this mask to the image and we can play with curves once again. So I can uh, bring up uh, this uh, screen and I can play with the C curve to like kind of uh, increase like the amount of, uh, of color in there, of warm color. I can play with the red channel here to, to increase that. I can play with the green channel to like yellowify this if I, if I need to. Uh, I can play with the blue channel to magentify this or, or not. No, it's it's really up to uh, to personal tastes what we do here. So each channel can be played with to adjust now the actual red. Um, the A channel, yeah, let's not touch the A channel. And we can also, of course, play with saturation. So something like that is not that bad. So I'm going to apply it to the image. And here we are with the, um, the image and the colors. They're not bad at all. I'm going to remove the mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some dynamic background or maybe let's try automatic background extraction first. Here, yeah, we'll want to use a function degree of two because when you have like vignetting in the corners, this can be approximated by a second order um, two variable polyno polynomial, which is what we're doing here. And the second order is what this function degree is telling us. And I am going to do a sub subtraction discard the background model, replace the target image. And immediately we get something much better, but you can see the blue was removed, but the corners are still a bit light. So I think I'm going to have to use dynamic background extraction. So I'm going to go to dynamic background extraction and we're going to be very selective about the points that we use. So I'm just going to tell it like, hey, those corners and the top as well, they're, they're kind of not great, kind of vi vignette -y. Um, and this corner too, it's kind of not great. Let's, let's tell you about this. And this to some extent as well. And at the same time, I'll tell it like, like this is kind of more normal. This darker area here is more noble. I don't want to go too much into the, the nebula so that uh, the dynamic background extraction knows um, what I want it to do. Let's try to just create a background and yeah, that's exactly what I want, right? We want to get rid of the vignetting. So now that I know what the background is, I'm going to set the correction to subtraction. I'm going to replace the target image and discard the background model. We're going to validate that. And this is immediately much better. Okay, we're much better off now. So now I can play with curves on the full image directly. Ah, don't we love playing with curves? Um, <laughs> Let's go into uh, our curves. I'm laughing alone, this is terrible. And uh, RGB, and we're gonna do like typical kind of uh, con contrast enhancement. This is not bad, but I feel like the saturation is a bit too aggressive. So, or maybe not saturation, but the C curve. Yeah, let, let's pull it back a little bit to be a bit less, less crazy about everything. Um, and, you know, I can play with whatever or other curves, but actually I'm not going to use the red curve. Um, yeah, this gives us decent contrast. Again, it's all a matter of feeling and personal preference at this stage. Here it is. This is not bad. I like this. We're isolating the subject from the background. We're not losing too much color. We're having fun. So now we're going to just, I'm not going to do further processing on that. Oh, yes, I am actually. I'm going to use the script uh, utilities and then we're going to do dark structure enhance. I'm going to leave the default parameters, say OK. I love that script. And yeah, immediately like this, the, the, the darker structures, they're more visible 
and I feel like the image blends more into its surroundings than it did before. And now we're going to add these stars back. So I am going to go back to Pixel Math. And I know Pixel Math is a reason why a lot of people hate PixInsight, but it's so convenient. I'm going to do dollar $t to say target, and we're going to add a star underscore mask, which is the name of this image here. So we're basically adding those stars back to the target. And I don't need to create a new image. We're going to replace the target image. And we're just going to drag and drop, and poof, the stars are back. Easy. Okay, and now we've put back these stars into the image. Actually, I don't like the magenta that I have the, in the image. Um, I will probably do another pass um, after this video to really play a bit better with curves so that we don't get that magenta tinge. But whatever, for now, I mean, you, you get the, the, the spirit of this. So we've added back the stars, and the stars, they're not so distracting. So while I usually do some easy star reduction this time, I will set the iterations yeah to just one uh, so that we don't do too much reduction of the stars and we're going to do it on this image run the easy star reduction and wait for the process to be done okay and here we are done the stars are slightly smaller slightly tighter but it doesn't distract from the uh, the overall image um, now is the time to do my get out of jail free card because the the result is noisy as heck and that comes from uh, being not having enough imaging time on this and also um, being in Tokyo. <laughs> Simple as that, even with very tight uh, band passes on the narrowband filters. Um, yeah, that's it. So we're going to save as and we're going to save it as a TIFF file. 32-bit TIFF will work. And now the get out of jail free card is Topaz Denoise. We're going to open that image. Here it is, and um, I tend to look at the background first, and I normally use AI Clear, but you can see that in this case it introduces some background mottling there, like kind of some wider areas, some darker areas, don't like that. So I'm going to go uh, to Denoise AI, I'm going to zoom a bit less. So we can see a bit more of the uh, of the image, and I think I'm gonna try to go a bit ham on noise reduction, like maybe yeah, a lot, because the the image is really 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 noisy. And what I'm doing now is I'm actually comparing the especially the structures with details, like here, are are there to make sure that Topaz Denoise hasn't like introduced fake. Um, structures that don't exist in the in the original image and that can happen a lot especially if you're doing like recovering um original detail kind of thing and then topaz denoise can like pull out new details out of nowhere uh which is not awesome so that's why i tend to 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 keep that fairly low and i think this is pretty pretty nice so i'm gonna save the image and this is how it looks like uh at the end so yeah, there's a bit of magenta, but actually it doesn't look too bad. It's really a matter of uh, per personal preference in terms of the colors. And that's pretty much it for this video. It's uh, just a PixInsight processing video, but I think it's a really cool way to get the Oxygen 3 Blue back without um, you know, betraying the spirit of the data. You know, I, I really, because we're using only masks and range masks, we're using the original data to pull that blue back. And so we're not like cheating. We're not selecting a specific area that we like to be blue. We're actually using the original data. And I, and I like that. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's all I wanted to show. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you like astrophotography, astronomy, I do other stuff than just PixInsights tutorials. So feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, the bell icon, you won't regret it. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your comments. If you have any tips and tricks, please leave them down below. Uh, click that like or dislike button while you're at it just to tell uh, YouTube there is some interest about this uh, video. But more important than that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.